All right, hello, peeps. Today we're going to take a look at War Tales. War Tales is a game I started looking at, gosh, it seems like a couple of years ago when it was in very, very early access. And even back then, it was still a very good game. Still a little bit rough around the edges, a little bit too difficult for me at the time for what I was looking for. But now it's had a couple of, a lot more time in early access. And it's almost ready to be announced for their 1.0 release, which is just in a little bit over a week from the time of this. And they just released a major community patch. So the game has been revamped a lot since the first time I played it. It's probably not even going to be the same type of game. And it's a, it's a fantasy warband tactical sort of thing. Actually, I don't know if fantasy is a good idea for because I don't think there's any actual magic in it. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I don't think there was any magic in it. But as you can see, we have new game. You can also play co-op. All sorts of good stuff. It's a tactical game. Um, I would hate to compare it to XCOM. Uh, because in XCOM you use guns and stuff like that. Can't really think of a good game to compare it to right now. It is turn-based. But let's go in and start a new game and see where we're at. So choose your destiny. Your companions are... Apprentice friends looking for an adventure. Men escorting merchants who lost their employer. Deserters fleeing an abusive captain. Young farmers looking for a better life. Or bandits looking to escape the guard. Now choose, depending on which destiny you choose, it gives you some initial starting bonuses. Like if you start off, if you're an apprentice friends looking for an adventure, you start off with some bonus influence. You have fewer raw materials and you start off with a swordsman, an archer, a ranger, and a brute, which looks like a pretty balanced group swordsman spearman warrior brute or men escorting merchants deserters swordsman officer warrior ranger you start off with extra suspicion if you're deserters and another one your suspicion gets to be a certain height then the guards of whatever land you're in starts coming to look for you but you do start off with bonus materials young farmers brute spearman spearman archer two spearmen Less happiness, but more food. You brought more bread with you because you are farmers, but you're not happy because you're farmers. Bandits look like they start off with um, a stolen braised chicken and a stolen cloth. Now, the braised, now if an item's flagged as stolen, then if you're caught with it, I don't remember if that means the guards will automatically attack you or what. Because like I said, it's been a long time. So I think we're just going to go for this nice little balanced one up here. One of these two, it looks like this is the most balanced one, but you do start off with fewer raw materials, which are used to craft certain items you can use in combat. Your companions are used to long walks, which gives them a better movement speed. Cunning fighters, experience gain in combat increased by 10%. Influence game director battle increased by 10%. Incredible resilience gives them better constitution, which is their ability to live, obviously. Excellent at slap games. Critical damage increased by 10%. Or are quick learners. Experience gain for each profession increased by 10%. Now there are crafting possession crafting professions in the game, and this will get, make you level up them faster. But I think we're gonna go with the our cunning fighters because it is essentially a combat game. And finally, we're gonna choose if they had a flaw, it would be a somewhat meek appearance. Your carrying capacity has decreased by one anvil. Eternal satisfa dissatisfaction reduces the troop's happiness. Now, happiness is pretty important. Uncommon bout of bad luck. Critical hit reduced by 3%. Very hard time getting up. Danger during rest increased by 10%. Or a serious lack. I think that the critical hit reduced by 3% is probably the best one. All right, so here's the two different exploration modes you can choose from. You can choose to do adaptive exploration. The difficulty of all regions adapts dynamically to your group's size and your unit's power. The game will always offer a challenge suited to your troop. So, like, as you level up, your enemies will level up. We'll try to keep a balanced sort of combat ability, of combat challenge for you. Or region-locked exploration. Each region of the world has a set difficulty from the start. You will have to expand and improve your troop before you can explore more dangerous areas and fight more powerful enemies. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I like. Some people like this. I like this. I like getting my troops to the point where they're super overpowered before going on to the next level, starting that challenge, etc. So that's just what I like to do. Obviously, you can choose your own stuff. Combat difficulty. 
So here are the technical battles and possibly a losing, losing companions should not scare you. You can always change the difficulty at any time. They've even changed it. That was one of the recent things. You can change it during a save. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I know that if you were fighting the same battle over and over again, and I do remember that there were some rat battles that were very difficult, then you can change it so that you can um, save your battle and come back with an easier time. You'll need to manage your companion's hunger, fatigue, and wages daily. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and go for experience on all of these. You can save any time and make multiple saves of the same game. Now, that's what I like because I'm a, I do have stuff that I have to do. And so here's our customization for our companions here. We've got Lubert, who's our brute. Tabad, who's our archer. Minetlin, who's our ranger. And our pony back there. I can't remember if our pony actually does any combat. I know that they do have a kick ability. And Ubrick. All right, let's see, look at our combat. Our so well, here's our starting random trait. And we can choose our random trait. Critical hit increased by 3%. So that would offset the, the debuff that we had earlier. Constitution, strength, nimble. Now she is, this was our ranger. So I think our dexterity is probably either our movement. So thick skin is a better guard. Wages reduced by 10%. That's always good. That would allow us to save 10% more money. But we're going to go with nimble. I think that we want to keep the woman. I'm going to give her. Let's look at the hair. Well, that does. Our hair options are not very good. <laughs> what are our hair colors? Not very bright. You can't really choose them. You just have to keep clicking through them. And they are kind of like peasants. So it's not like we can really do a whole lot. And our traits. Otherwise, it just chooses random traits for her. How many traits can we just keep giving them? Random negative trait. Cost plus three in wages. Wages. Constitution. Unlucky. Loafer. Depressed or drunkard. Must consume alcohol with every meal to be. And right, so just leave it like that. I'm going to let everybody else be random. So we've got him. Can we change your name? So our ranger is Whisper. These are just old names that I've used for my peeps before. Our swordsman. I just like kind of having names that go along with their... Eh, we'll leave them. We'll just have to remember. Well, can, I, can we make the rubric swordsman? Hmm. Ubrick Sword. How's that go? There we go. And Tabad Archer. The Bad Archer. Sometimes I just forget who my people are. And Lured the Brute. Lured Brute. Now we can change their starting weapons and their starting skills, but we're just going to go ahead and go with their what they have. So begin adventure. These are wonderful loading screen. They do have some pretty good art in this game. They've done, they've captured the medieval tone in the game quite well. At the beginning, your companions are off in search of adventure. After a few days of quietly traveling along, their only feat was not getting lost and they have reached their destination. Here surely awaits some novel, no, sorry, here surely awaits some novel and exciting quest that will stir up the uneventful lives bored apprentices. Adventure awaits at the end of the road for those who make it there alive, that is. Okay, so this is still the same starting area as always. Now we can zoom in a little bit, but we can't zoom out much. Here we see we have a nice little bowl around us and there's stuff over here. Click on it, we automatically start moving in that direction. Obviously, there's your shinies, but there's no tool tip or anything that we can look at to see what they are. I'm gonna go over here and collect them. If you see this little this little bar up here, we've gathered three something. Let's see if I can bring up our inventory. Yes, yeah, so we picked up these three flowers. Comfrey. Comfrey is commonplace in prairies and fields. You see, even though I've stopped moving, the world has not stopped moving. I don't like the looks of these guys over here. It looks like we have some friends coming to say hello. 
Bandits, level one. So we have a hoodlum and we have a poacher. So it throws us into combat, first of all. Obviously, it's a combat game. So day one, 16 hours. Use the campfire to cook a nice meal and get some sleep. Now, these other things up here, you can see right now, knowledge. This is basically lore, and it helps us gain blueprints, patterns, and stuff like that for crafting. Each region has its own scenario. We don't have anything, the scenario for this region yet. But I know some of them are like there's, um, I think for the starting region, at least it was when I played it a few months ago. The starting region, there was like a war going on in another region and a bunch of refugees were coming into this region and the people who already lived here were not very happy about it. The suspicion. This is your wanted level and it will get you of uh, how frequent the guards will we're going to patrol and how often they'll attack you. Happiness, your troop's happiness evolves over time. Make sure it remains positive so companions don't leave the troop. So you can see the higher happiness, the better off you are. Any gain above 15 grants you 5 influence per happiness point. Speaking of influence, your influence can be used to recruit new companions or perform certain actions. Valor points in combat. To, so valor is kind of like a special action points. You need a certain amount of valor points to perform some certain moves that your characters might have. We'll see that in a little bit. And we got 72 food, which is four days. Now it says four days. I don't know if that reflects what they've said. No, that food is right. So the wages, obviously you have to pay your people and you pay them in these crowns. Now before this update, you would have to pay your, you would have to pay your troops every time you did a, every day. Now they've done it for every rest. So if you manage to make a long expedition every three rests. So they've just made it more flexible for when you actually have to pay your people. That's one of the things that people have been complaining about the game is, the, is that the paying your troops makes the game less fun, but it doesn't add anything to the game. And that's something the developers are still working on. And maybe this every three rests instead of every day will help. You can see that our currently I have 200 crowns. Then after three rests, I will have to pay them 59 crowns. All right, so let's get to this battle, my friends. All right, here we go. Combat. When your turn comes, play any unit you haven't used yet in the round. You can find out which enemy will then come into play. Prepare your strategy. I can, so first off, I have, we have to place our peeps. But there's only two of them, so obviously I want my... So this is Whisper. She's our Ranger. And put her there. Just drag and drop them. The Brute, I'm going to put him there. And the Swords person is going to be there. I'm going to move her over here so maybe she can sneak around and do some backstabby stuff like they do. See, so you have two Valor points. Whisper, right now she can either run. Stab, which is her basic attack. Or she can move. And here's Lubard. He doesn't have any special attacks yet, but he can use first aid. He has a special ability of taunt. As you can see, it uses one valor. Forces the target to engage and inflicts weakening to them. So he's kind of like our tank. What about him? He's just a, a brute that can smash people. And he can shoot. And later on, I know that he gets like a pin ability. So right now, the only person that really has any special abilities are these two. Her Valor Point disengages and moves in a straight line up to 5 meters. Now, disengages probably means that she can disengage without actually taking any damage. So I'm going to have him go ahead and use any unit that hasn't taken part in this round yet. We can retreat. Obviously, we're not going to do that. And we're not going to end our turn yet. So I'm going to have him go ahead and move. So his range, I'm going to give him a shot first. So he needs to move up a little bit. Maybe to about right here. And we don't have action points. We just have mm -hmm. armor and health. So now I should be able to shoot. Now I can shoot the hoodlum or I can shoot their archer. So I think the first thing we need to do is take out their archer. I'm going to have him shoot. Twang! Five points of damage and he doesn't have any ability points left so I can end his turn and then and you can tell from this timeline over here that we, so this is Ty Bird's turn that we're using right now next turn we can use any of our people now she can't do anything yet 
because we have to give them their shot. So I'm going to end this turn. It's so now any of our characters, obviously, except for Tybird, can move again. Now she can move. How far can she move? Now she can move close enough to him. Oops. Move to there. And here's our morale at the top. The more damage we do to them, or the more of them we kill, the better our morale will be. So right now we don't have any special morale bonuses, but we do get to a certain point. Our, our units become galvanized, so significantly boosting the damage we deal. And the next one after that, you win the battle. Your opponents are overwhelmed and try to flee. Okay, so now she's moved up. How can I, can I scroll the map? Yeah, click and drag. All right, so now she can just use her normal stab attack. Which finishes him off. Engage. When you perform a melee attack on a free enemy, you engage them. An engaged unit can only attack their engaged opponent. And there's a higher chance of taking critical damage. Take advantage of this with your other units. An engaged unit is exposing their back, attacking them from behind to get their bonus. Basically, if you're right next to somebody, they can't do anything else. Now, I could disengage, but that gives him an attack of opportunity unless I use my run, which lets me do it, which lets me get away for free. I thought he was dead. No, I just took out his armor. So he's still alive and kicking, unfortunately. And that's going to be the end of their, my turn. So next turn, it will be their hoodlum. The hoodlum is going to take his turn. So even though we're flexible about how our troops can use, they are not. Oh, almost retreated. That would have been... Kind of boring. So he's going to go over here and attack her. She's poisoned. And her armor is already all gone. So now I'm going to have Ubrik come over and finish off this dude. He's going to move there. And attack. Well, maybe finish him off. Probably not. It's going to hit him with the old sword. And then he'll have to end his turn. And then it'll be Lubriz the turn. He's going to go here. He's going to conk him in the back, which will engage him. So now these two units are engaged. These two units are engaged. Not to be married, obviously. All right, so now we end our turn, and it'll be this archer dude's turn, and he can attack. He's only able to do one. The new round is starting, and the shadows are closing in. I'm going to have my archer be the first one to attack again. It looks like we're just going to keep going after the poacher to try and finish him off. Now, I can move, but I'm not going to. I could run up and heal somebody, but nobody's dying. Now, she's poisoned. Did I get over to... I couldn't get over to her to fix the poison, but I'm going to go ahead and move over here just in case I have to be in that area next turn. Go ahead and end this turn. I'm going to go ahead and have him finish this off. Shoo. Now at this point, she's not engaged. She doesn't have anything that she can use to finish off her, to cure her poison though. So she'll lose 5% of her maximum health at the end of their turn. And it's stackable. So you can have 10% poison, 20% poison, a million percent poison. Okay, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but she's still okay. And since she's already attacked, she can't really do anything else at the moment. Or did she attack? Oh, his, he was his, he's the one that had his turn. He finished it off. So next it'll be the hoodlum's turn. Now I could move. And I will go ahead and move here. Maybe it'll keep surrounded and engaged enemy with two allies to get a bonus. See, now he's surrounded. And the surrounded debuff means his damage taken is increased by 20%. Now he does have the poisoning ability. You can click on the units and see what their abilities are. He's still got three armor left. You have to get rid of their armor before you can take care of their actual health. Now he's poisoned us again. Now the bad thing is, I can't remember, the poison might persist even afterwards. She's going to go, all right, I'm sorry you had to see that, but she got a good execution in there. All right, so you can see that we gained two human remains, probably useless. Now, you can take them because I know that you can actually eat these corpses. I think we don't need to worry about that in 
power. So I'm going to take their money. I'm going to take a damaged dagger. Now this dagger does have the poisoning ability on it. So maybe one of our people can use it. So his armor is damaged. Her armor is damaged. And he has leveled up his swordsman ability. Now we have two raw materials, which means we can use those to repair our damaged armor, which we're going to go ahead and do. Just so you can see that. Now if I right click on him, we can inspect him and you can see that he now has an aptitude point that he can spin. So when we spend our aptitude point, we can choose our specialization. Are we going to be a protector, which will give us a constitution plus two? Or are we going to be a fighter? Are we going to be a sword master? Now if we pick the sword master, that means we will gain the ability, which we have to have two valor points to use deal five damage to all units in the area two times and it's usable after i've already attacked two times or i can use the stabilizing strike deals four to five damage to the target and applies destabilization destabilization means their guard is reduced to zero essentially they have no armor for two rounds protector this unit all uh, and all allies in the area gain protection which means damage taken is reduced by 30 percent I'm gonna go ahead and use this ability. There we go. And we still have one more aptitude point that we can use, right? Nope, we can't do it until we get to third level oh, aptitudes. We can use down here. We can raise our strength, we can raise our constitution, or we can raise our movement. The plus signs are how important these skills are how important these attributes are to the particular profession. So like constitution is very important for a fighter, followed by strength and critical and movement. Willpower and dexterity are not that important. So strength increases our slice damage and increases our destabilizing strike. Constitution will give us extra carrying capacity and four more health. Movement will let us move one. We're very weak for some reason, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our strength. I don't know why we have a weak swordsman. It's just the roll of the dice. Now we continue. Now we're going to go over here and pick up these things. And we got two. That was iron ore. As of right now, we don't really have any sort of objective or goals in the game. Now we can move the map around. You can see it looks very nice. Almost looks like a little bit of a tilt shift thing there. There's some peasants moving around up there. So let's just keep going. You can see there's like some sort of house or village down here. Let's go down here and see what this... So there's some stables. Let's see what this sign says here. Alright, west is Stromcrap... Stromcap. Sorry. And east is Tiltran Jail. I don't think we need to go to the jail just yet. Here comes some... I'm assuming those are mercenaries. Let's go over here and look at these stables. Here you see, we can talk to the pony. Patient animal is chewing on cabbage leaves. And we can either adopt him for 180, which we which we have, but we're not going to spend that much. Or we can inspect him, which shows what his attributes are. And you see he does have a skill for dealing three or four damage. We can leave. We can look in this barrel. Now, if we try to steal this stuff, then we can be flagged. We don't have anybody at the moment that's good at stealing, as far as I know. Or we can talk to this guy here. Sometimes, from what I remember, there was when you visited an area, you kind of had to click around a little bit for all the people you have to talk to. Here we can talk to Annette, and we can talk to Ingenham. And sometimes there's even little stuff out here you can click on. Talk to Annette. Although the war in Edoran has been a boon for my business, I cannot help but feel for my poor ponies. I can tell you aren't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. Otherwise, they would most likely end up dead on the battlefield through no fault of their own. Yeah, it sounds like marketing to me. Eggingham. When I think of how many people don't shoe their ponies, it makes me want to pull out what little hair I have left. Tell you what, buy a horse from us and I'll throw in the horseshoes for free. Alright, so even though we don't have enough money to buy a pony, so I don't know what these people are going to want, so let's just head over to the nearest town. I think that's just a merchant caravan. There's some sort of smoking barrel or something and right, so we've got cloth okay which is good because if i remember cloth was kind of hard to you have to be careful when you're all right so all 
Progress made in your discoveries has in, in earned you a knowledge point. Let's go look at knowledge. All right, so we got a knowledge point. So here's knowledge and workshop. Can we spend a point in knowledge or can we spend a point in both? Now this is all the stuff that we have recipes for. We have, right now we have a recipe for a lock pick, which takes one iron ore. We make a recipe for a torch. The piton for climbing, fish hook for fishing, obviously. Needles, spare buckles, all sorts of things that we don't have recipes for yet. Some things we have knowledge of them, but we don't have the recipe for let Yeah, like campfire. Tents, hitching posts, lots of things that we can... We don't know what these are yet, so... Go back to knowledge. Run, you can run for short periods of time. Perfect to get away from pursuers. Rationing, troops eat three less food, which might be good. Your troops improve their armor maintenance skills, repair materials, and village blacksmiths restore five additional armor points. Okay, that could be good. Frugality. 10% less wages. Career plans allow you to have enhanced control of your companions' evolution when they level up. We we'll talk. Let's see. Weighted training. Feet makers. Maximum valor points. We don't have that many artful dodgers. Hmm. Let's see. You can now devour human corpses. Not something I'm really that interested in at the moment. So I think I'm going to take rationing. Because I know that food can become a major issue at some point later on. We're just going to keep heading on over here to Strom Cap. We would find things we can learn here. All right, so you can see we're in the village now. We can interact with the Traveler's Feast Inn. The Tiltron Apothecary Clinic. The Three Hairs Market. Town Hall or Master Ulan's Forge. Let's go to the inn first. It's always a good place to start. And we've got some various people we can interact with. You can see we have Nangus, Goat, Emissary Virtwil, and this guy here. All right, so let's talk to Ortonus first. Hey, it's not often you see new faces around here. Well, apart from the Edoranian war refugees, that is. Feel free to come back often. There's always folks looking for work around here, especially since all that fighting started across the border. Now we could sing or we could rest. That costs 36, which we're not going to spend yet. We can buy brandy. Buy apple pancakes, which counts as 14 food. And it costs 30. Or we can buy a recipe for apple pancakes. It costs 100. But we're not going to buy anything just yet. We're going to look around here and see what as long as I get my fill, I make a great companion. Here's somebody we can recruit. And it would cost 30 influence to, to recruit him. And we would have to pay 60 plus his wages later on. The informant. Psst, you. Yeah, you. You're looking for work? I can give you tips and point you toward the best missin missions. The kind better than the measly rewards the mercenary guild had us to offer. Of course, you'll then have to meet the client and meddle in other people's affairs, but at the end of the day, it's the number of crowns in your purse that counts, right? All right, so we can purchase the special quest. All right, so you can do the wife of a man condemned to the gallows is desperately seeking help. Someone needs help in the abandoned tower. At least that's what the screaming out of the window Refugees looking for mercenaries who can fight as well as they can negotiate. The captain of the guard is looking for mer mercenaries who can help him bring a criminal to justice. Now, I can't remember. I think I think that these... Does this one sound familiar? I think that you can buy these quests and they'll lead you to them. But I think some of these quests you just run into in the world in general. I'm not sure. Bartos is just somebody else who you can, who you can recruit. Might you be looking for work? Our role as emissaries is to ensure that all service requests are filled. We regularly update our job offers. So this is where you can get bounties, essentially. So you can see that some of these are easy, some of them are hard. And when it means hard, it means very hard. Help requested desperate, desperate refugees. Bandits have been taking caravans and travelers along the road. They must end now, or merchants will refuse to travel through Tiltron. Or vanquish the Pelic Gang. Helen Gang must have inconvenienced the wrong person. Now someone is willing to pay to get rid of them. And we know that's to the east. And both of these are to the east. I'm going to go ahead and accept this one. And it gives us a marker. And I accept this one too. 
All right, so I've accepted both of them. Now that doesn't mean they're going to be easy to do, even though they're labeled easy on there. These things are not necessarily super easy. So do I want to go ahead and hire somebody else? Just in case. We have four companions already. We pay them 60. We've got enough food for a while. I think we're just going to go ahead and go with what we got. So that was that. The apothecary clinic, you can buy medicines and whatnot, or you can craft medicines, but we don't have anybody that can do that just yet. My concoctions can heal the most grievous injuries. Be sure to hold on to the vials after using them. We can buy a vial. This is basically an empty bottle. You can buy medicine that can heal the companion's injury. Plague infected wounds. Fish oil. I don't know if that was a component. Recipes. You can buy recipes for sharpening oil or strength oil. I think I am going to go ahead and buy one of these. How do we buy it? There we go. All right. So did we buy two of them? Oh, we already had one of those. Okay. So spent a little bit more money than I wanted to. Now I can choose somebody to be an alchemist. I'm not going to do that just yet because there's other skills that I think might be more important. We go to Master Ulan's Forge. We can talk to Master Ulan. You can use my anvil. I can also repair your armor. Oh, and I'm looking to hire a skilled blacksmith if you happen to know one. Tilt and restoration. Following tilt and mission, your troop optimizes armor maintenance. This is like a perk or something. Repair materials in Village Blacksmiths restore five additional armor points. 100 coal and raw materials. We still have 13 raw material materials at the moment. And if I click on the forge, Gives me a chance to choose somebody to be our blacksmith. I'm going to have our swords person play our, be our blacksmith. Yes, he's a blacksmith. So right now, we don't have the ability to make anything because we don't have all the materials for them. But as we level up, we'll learn more stuff. And sometimes, once we... Once we... Like this one, like once the first time we craft a targ, then we'll learn a new recipe. So, can we do something with the sword? Does the sword need repaired? Our right, dexterity plus three deals 70 90% dexterity damage to the target and applies one poison. I'm wondering if this would be a good weapon for our little rogue person here. Because hers deals six to eight damage. But it doesn't do anything but it also gives all right so the damage dagger so this will this show what our da damage is deal six to eight damage if i put the, if i equip this deal six to eight damage to target and applies poison so i'm gonna go ahead and give this one a shot for a while can we use can we use two-handed no i think two-handed is something we have to learn okay we're not going to worry about that. Town Hall, the Three Hairs Market, where you can go buy stuff. The beggar, I'm not going to tell you anything about these beggars other than avoid them. The Town Hall. Lady Maris Gontronde. Are you mercenaries? I'll have you know that we'll, we do not take kindly to refugees in these parts. Why, you ask? Because they have overrun our streets and are now taking to the roads. Edoran is sending our way anything with legs and a mouth that cannot wield a sword. You have your work cut out for you. There is no lack of honest folk of need to help fend off the refugee menace. Like I said, not going well for the refugees at the moment. And that's basically what this storyline here is. Once we start getting involved with the refugees and their businesses, then... Then the storyline will start progressing. Now we need to head east over towards where the those things were. Now we can go fishing. I don't know if we I think we have to choose somebody to be a fisherman. I don't know if I want to lock somebody into that profession yet. But I think our archer would probably be a good fisherman. But I don't know if we can use a hook to cast your line in the water with the left mouse button. Once the fish is hooked, hold. Keep the line tight in the tendril zone. Don't let the fish escape. So I've got three. So I think I need a hook, so I can't exactly do it yet. Right? 
Go help. Use a hook to cast your line. Alright, so I don't have a hook. So I need to get a hook. We can make those. But we don't have the materials to make them yet. So we're going to head over here towards Vanquish the Pellet Gang. And we're going to see just how easy this Vanquishing the Pellet Gang is actually going to be. And these are merchants, I believe. Maybe one of them selling a fish hook. Nope. Might interest you in my humble wares, good sir. Now we can't attack them. And you can see that he's got all these people here. And it looks like these people have actual armor. So I'm not going to attack them. I could buy some nice armor, a valuable Gambason for 90. That would not leave me with enough money to pay my... Well, we need 60 for wages. We got 141 minus 90. This would be really good for somebody, though. But they have to be level 2 to wear it. I'm going to go ahead and take the... Take the gamble. Because that could be really good for... Who's level two? That could be really good for him if he can wear it. Yep, that could be really good for him. It gives him much better stats. 19 and 28 compared to 10 and 28. So he's got much better. And his armor is 17, his guard is plus 12. So that could make the battle with these. Go down here and pick up this stuff. Like I said, we only have to pay our wages every three rests, and we haven't rested yet. So is this going to be them over here? Usually, I think there's like swords or something above where the bad guys will be. See, there's the guard outpost, and there is our gang. So I'm going to go ahead and save the game. Create a new save game. Learn. Okay. You see, alright, so return to menu. Alright, so continue. And so let's go catch up to these guys. These are our guys, right? Yep. This is our gang. Let's go and give them a Alright, so the pellet gang, there's a hoodlum and a poacher. Now does that mean there's only two of them? Now I know for animals, I know that when they said they were balancing the game, they made fewer animals, but the animals were tougher. Because I do remember playing initially and you would have some super you would have like a whole bunch of wolves and you would have to wait a long time for all the wolves to move and i think that they said they've reduced like if you encounter a pack of wolves there'll be fewer wolves but each wolf each individual wolf will be a little bit tougher which is fine all right let's go ahead and fight 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 You see a day has almost gone by. Our fatigue is getting pretty high, so we are going to have to rest very, very soon. Have to rest very, very soon. Pretty much after this battle, I'm pretty sure. So, yep, there's only two of them. So I'm just going to put our two tough dudes up here in the front. I don't know if I want to move her. So we'll have one person that can move. I'm going to go ahead and move her down there. I'm going to move the archer up here. So now, Old Brick has got the... I'm going to have him move here and go ahead and engage. I'm going to go ahead and have him do the... You know, that's going to use a Valor Point, so it'll give you a chance to see what the Valor Points do. So now he's destabilized, which means... So he's their leader. Because strength, dexterity, and constitution increased by 30, cannot be captured. Critical hit increased by 30%. He's engaged, which means he can only attack that person. And he's destabilized, so his guards reduced to zero for the rest of the turn. Or at least for the next two rounds. Now, I use my ability. Now I can still use my normal attack, which is going to be my slice. And since he didn't have any guard, the attack went through pretty well. So now I have to end Ubrick's turn, and since he's got all that extra armor, he's going to be a little bit better off. He only took five damage from that. Oh, there was another person back here. Now you can see they have these special things here. Whisper can run over. And, okay, there's still another guy back here. She can run over here and grab this and then use that on him, which I think we'll, we'll do because it'll be a free attack. So she's going to move here. And now you can see she can use the spear throw. You can throw at him. Chunk, which does four points of damage to him. 
Now she can still do her normal move. She's going to go up here. And then she's going to poison him. Hopefully. So now he's poisoned. And that ends our turn. And now it's going to be one of their turns. Now see, poor Whisper here doesn't take much in the way of... Okay, so now it's both of ours. So I'm going to have him go ahead and move up to where he's in range. Go ahead and move up to here. And now he can shoot somebody. I'm going to worry about getting Whisper saved, first of all, because she's got the least armor. And then end his turn. And now it'll be Mr. Brute's turn. He's going to go here. Now he's not surrounded yet, right? Probably not until we actually attack him. So let's go and give him the pound. And so now that we've pounded him, he's engaged, but he's not surrounded yet. So I guess we have to get behind him. Or maybe it has to be more than two people to be considered surrounded. So end our turn. Now this young fellow is going to run up and shoot an arrow at somebody. I'm guessing it's going to be Whisper. They see his actually knocked Whisper out of the way. So now who are we going to use next? Now he's only got two points of life left. So I'm going to have him finish him off. Hopefully. We have this young, charming young fellow. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and have him, have him move closer. And then end the archer's turn. He's going to attack us. But since we have that extra guard and the armor, he's not going to get through us. Now this fellow needs to see if we can get up here close enough to engage the archer reduce the chances he's going to attack whisper now he doesn't have any special abilities or anything so he's just going to go ahead and end his turn now i'm going to go ahead and play it safe with the whisper and move her away because i don't want people dying and she's already blooding and i don't want her blooding to death And so now it's our turn again. And I should be able to do... Is he still destabilized? Not destabilized anymore, but I don't want to use up all of our Valor points. And so we did 12 points of damage that time. Now I could do another kick, which would do 9 damage, which would help end this battle quickly. But we will be out of Valor points. But I'm going to go ahead and do it, because we're going to have to rest soon anyway. And now he's gone. Ubrick unlocked the trick Glorious. I'm going to go ahead and have him move up here so we can finish the, this dude off as quickly as possible. In our turn, he gets to attack. And now hopefully we'll be able to finish him off. A new round is starting. I'm going to have Ubrick move around behind him. And attack. And that took care of him completely now, didn't it? Your group is overtired. Your companions might die of exhaustion if you keep walking. You really should rest. All right, so Whisper. So we do have enough to repair all of our armor. And we have enough to heal everybody. So you can see now we have an empty vial now that we drank that. Now the person said to save our vials, which we're going to. So we're not going to loot the corp. We're not going to loot their corpses. We've got 55 experience points. We've got 11 influence. We've got ringleader's dagger. Sure, practical and sharp, highly sought after by bandits. Whirlwind, devious whirlwind. This could be a very nice weapon. Deals 60% dexterity damage to all the units in the area. If this attack hits several units, creates a cloud of poison under each of them. So this could be a very important thing. And now Whisper gets to level up. So she can choose her specialization now. We want her specialization to be Valorous Support. Every time this unit ends their turn next to an ally and is not engaged in combat, you gain a Valor Point. I think that's a Valor Point. Every time this unit kills an enemy, you gain something. Every time this unit ends their turn next to an enemy and is not engaged in combat. So I think we're going to be ending our turn next to enemies. Hmm... I think we're going to try that one. Which means she needs to be the second person to run up on these people. We need to let our friends engage them and then Whisper needs to run up and attack them next. So her dexterity. 
Dexterity, willpower, movement. So in order to do what I just said, we want better movement. So there we go for that. So continue. You've just completed the mission. Vank report to an emissary. But first we need to rest. So we're going to camp. You can rest at a camp, find your camp. Feed your troops and pay their wages to avoid unrest. Resting refills your fatigue meter, restores valor points, and speeds up time. And so how long are we going to rest? So we've got to feed everybody. We've got enough food. So we can move our camping gear. We can use it. All right, so let's do this. So our food, we need to have 15 food. And this gives us four. All right, so crunchy, juicy apples. So there we go. We don't have to pay yet. We don't have any wages. To, we don't have to pay until our third rest. So now we're going to rest. And since we completed that mission, we have to go all the way back to Peltwick. I mean, all the way back to Stromcap to, to gain our uh, money. Your troop is well rested. You have gained two valor points. Your troop's happiness increased by plus four. Plus four companions assigned to the campfire. Your troop's happiness is nine. Your companions are pleased. You've gained the following bonus. Valor, maximum valor points increased by one. But it didn't actually give us more valor points. So now we can break camp. Now, if you remember, we have another mission all the way over here. Now, this should also be another easy mission. So we can go do that mission and then go back to Stromcap and collect our money. And we could walk back to Stromcap, collect our money, and then come back. Hammer for hire. So these are two objectives that it didn't tell us about when it gave them to us. So he wants us to buy a pony and find a blacksmith. Now, we don't have a blacksmith at the moment. I'm sure we'll run into somebody sooner or later. So we have to go over here. Now, we're going to have to go through the woods, which could be an issue. Go ahead and save our game again. Overwrite. Continue. Now, I wonder if we should just keep following the road. Picking up junk we found on the road. So sometimes we can run into trouble going past the woods, through the woods. This is a very dangerous game sometimes. Sometimes you will just have bandits just run out of the road. There's something here in the woods we can pick up. We got two logs. And so I think that if we continue following this road, we're going to run into... Our quest. Let's go over here and inspect this stuff. Yeah, we got some leather. Come in handy later. We're going to keep heading this way, looking for our quest. Some more wood. I don't know if we can become overburdened. I can't remember. We need to kind of turn around. Oh, like I said, we can get attacked. So, all right, desperate refugees. So they're just attacking us. Bandits have been attacking caravans and travelers along the road. This must end now. Our merchants will refuse to travel. We're being attacked by a level one hoodlum and poachers. Their leader is Adelaide Hoodlum. So I don't know if this means we got Adelaide and two other people. Let's find out. Will there be two all together? Or there will be three all together? So it looks like there's Adelette, Hoodlum, and Poacher. Adelette was their leader, I thought. But I guess she doesn't have leadership bonuses. Now remember, we're going to try and keep Whisper out of trouble. She's going to be... So we're going to have our... Normal dudes go up and engage first. Who had that fancy armor? The swordsman man, sword dude had the armor. And we have Whisper go here. Actually, I'm going to have Whisper go here. Archer there. Now, their first person that's going to move is going to be this hoodlum. So we want him engaged before we do anything. So I'm going to have him move over. Have him stand there. Now, I'm not going to use my destabilizing strike at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and use my normal slice. I just want to get him engaged at the moment. So now we're engaged. So now he'll get to do something. Now he can poison. But his poison lasts for one turn, I believe. So let's go ahead and end our turn. And see what happens. And we got a glorious. 
I don't know. So we got a Valor Point for a Glorious Ability. I don't remember what that exactly does. So now we get to move. And then Adelette will take her turn. So I'm going to have the Brute run over and engage her. Give her a nice pounding. And that'll be the end of our turn. And then now she's going to do something. So now everybody's poisoned. Everybody gets poisoned in this game. Now Whisper could still get engaged, but the Poacher could still shoot Whisper, but I think we might be okay. But Whisper can't really get in range of anybody at the moment. We're going to go ahead and move her over here. So she'll be ready to help finish off Adelaide in just a moment. So she's going to end her turn, and then now the archer gets to move. She's going to move him up to here, which should put him in range to attack somebody. Now, do we want to attack Adelette, or we want to start working on finishing off the hoodlum? Let's work on the hoodlum first. And I accidentally shot my own person. So that didn't work out very well, did it? Now their archer gets to shoot, and hopefully, well, unfortunately, he didn't shoot his own person like I did. And so now I'm not going to use my archer, so I'm going to let Adelette will be moving next. So Whisper is going to run around. Backstab her. Go ahead and poison her. Did 12 points of damage, and now she's poisoned. We don't have to use that. Every time the unit, so we're not engaged with her, so we should be able to... Now I think the Whisper can actually run away since she's not technically engaged in combat. I can run around back over on this side. So maybe it'll prevent this guy from getting close to me. In her turn. Now she gets a Valor Point even though I don't have anything to do with them. But now I'm double poisoned on him. Now who do I want to move next? Because we get two people to get to move next. So I'm going to go ahead and have him. See if I can finish him off. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and have the archer see if he can finish him off. Come on. Oh, our archer's already... Has our archer already attacked? No, maybe since I've already clicked on him, I have to use him. I don't understand what's going on. It's a pound. There we go. Didn't finish him off, but it did do a nice chunk of damage. So now maybe our archer can finish off this dude. 76% chance, 24% chance of hitting my own person. There we go, finished him off. And now our troops are galvanized, so we'll do extra damage. He can just stay there. How much poison do you have on him? So we'll go ahead and end our turn. So now it'll be this dude's turn. Alright, so we're still good. Now he's going to go ahead and use the old slice and dice on him. Nice chunk of damage. I could use this. Since we've got extra Valor points, I'm going to go ahead and use this to do a roundhouse kick to his face. Your opponents are demoralized and flee. Do you want to let them go and win the battle? We could let them go, or we could go ahead and kill this guy so we get extra... extra experience, which is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and move over here. So we can't get to my dude. Let's see if they see if he tries to flee. See what he's gonna do. So he's gonna take a shot at this dude, which is fine. And now we got a new round, so this guy is gonna run over there. Hit him from the side. Go ahead and do a normal attack. Since our people are galvanized, we're doing extra damage. Go ahead and end my turn. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use Whisper. I want to get her up to higher levels as soon as possible. Just because I like rogues. Sorry. Go ahead and have her gently put him to sleep. There we go. So now we've completed that. We got three cloth. We got a jacket. Would be nice. It's good jacket weather. Cool, breezy. We got enough raw materials to repair all of our armor. And two people are now going to be leveled up. So now everybody's going to be at least level 2. So Tibald is going to specialize in... We do not want him to be next to anybody. We'll go ahead and use him to killing an enemy. 
And then his constitution or his dexterity. That'll increase his ability or increase his movement. Constitution. I'm going to go ahead and increase his dexterity. I want him doing more damage. Okay, so that's him. And then now our brute is finally leveling up. Go ahead and choose his special ability. Destroyer. Weakening blow. Poisoned impact. Deals four damage to all the units in the area. That includes my unit too, I believe. Relentless charge. This engages and charges in a straight line. Deals four. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with destroyer. And then obviously he's weak and he needs an extra extra points. All right, so we've got all of our loot and everybody's leveled up. We're not tired. Please have mercy, good sirs. Have mercy on us. We didn't attack you to hurt you. Believe me, we only wanted to scare you so that you would hand over your crowns. Please don't hurt me. It was wrong and we knew it. But Gosenberg requires so much gold to cross the border that we had no other choice. We have no other choice but to rob travelers. All right, so unfortunately, we don't have any other choices here. We can't give them a border pass. We can't give them 250 crowns. The only thing we can do is execute them. We can't just straight up just leave them, unfortunately. So we just have to do what the game <laughs> lets us do. We have to execute them. You've just completed the mission. Help requested, des help requested desperate refugees. And now... We need to go back home. Uh-oh, and now we've been attacked by boars, by four level two boars. So we're going to distract them with some apples so we can try and get back home. So if that's north, we want to head west to try and get... Yeah, we want to try and get out of here. And we did lose four apples, but by the time we get back to town, we should have plenty of money. Well, maybe not plenty of money. But we should have enough money to buy the food. Now, we could have fought those four boars. There was only four boars, but they were also level two. And like he's, like I said, I like to level up my people and get them experience and equipment and stuff like that. So that when it is time to fight, we're almost guaranteed a victory. That's just how I am. Speaking of which, I want to check on something real quick. We did get some new armor and new weapons. I'm going to wait until we get a little bit closer. Now, I know this is a quest. We got a knowledge point, but I'm going to wait until we get a little bit closer to town before I start messing with them. There's a dead person. I remember that there is a quest that goes along with a dead person. We'll go ahead and inspect him now. So we got 10 crowns. Noise. There's just random stuff off the side of the road. Sometimes you can find side quests just waiting off the side of the road. Teague level is getting high again already. And do we want to camp or we want to use some of our newfound money to camp in town? Which I think is what we might do. Let's get our money first. Okay, so let's go to the Traveler's Feast Inn. Check in with this person. Might you be looking for work? Select bounty. You're in 365 crown from our missions. So now everything now is just average, and in 10 hours there'll be a new contract. So let's go ahead and, and we got 456. Go ahead and rest. We'll recover three, and it only requires 36. I took 36 crowns, so that wasn't bad. So now let's leave. We look at our companions while we're here in town. So he's just wearing ang angler's rags. And we now we got a jacket. And so this is better. And since he's one of our frontline dudes, I'm going to put that there. We're going to move these down here. These are things that can be scrapped at some point, I guess. So. I think that's where we're going to call it for today. We're right at one hour doing this. It's actually the first 60 minutes. You get to see combat. You get to see getting missions. You get to see leveling up characters. The game does go live next week.
or I'm sorry, April 13th or 14th, so the game does go live out of early access soon. You might want to check it. Thank you for being here, and I will see you soon.